Yo, yo, everyone, Mango here, and welcome back to another episode for the online trading card game Shadow Era. And today, for the hero profile, we're doing Vest Swift Hands. And, hmm, three Elos Resolve right off the bat. I think what I'm going to have to do is get rid of this because I really want to keep all of those. So this uh, this hero is a, sh a Shadow Warrior. And Vest's ability is for three Shadow Energy. The next three attachments that you summon cost three less resources. Ugh. Okay, now I have to get rid of one of these. I have four of these in my deck. Um, and th these are the best card to have in this matchup because Baduru actually focuses on playing weapons. And so these this card, Ellis Resolve, it gives an ally plus one, plus one to both stats. But it also gives them uh, minus two damage to uh, it, minus two damage in regards to combat uh, damage dealt. So I'm going to get rid of this blackened heart. I don't see it having much use for me in this matchup. What it does is let's take a look at it. What it does is that it makes your ally immune to abilities activated with shadow energy. So if this ally was in was a, or if this hero was something that used shadow energy to activate his ability and deal damage or kill an ally it'd be good to keep but right now uh, I don't really see the need to so I sacrificed up to three and I played out this guy and again like I always say in in shadow era you don't gain you don't gain mana at the start of each turns at the start of each of your turns you have to sacrifice a card from your hand in order to play in order to gain mana in this game they're called resources Okay, so it's it's a choice you have to make at the start of each of your turns whether you want to whether you want to uh, resource a card or not. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to skip, and this guy's ability here, and when you control a non-woven ally or a, a hero, non-woven hero, this is a, a warrior hero, all other uh, woven allies, or the first woven ally you summon costs one less resource. So this guy, you see, costs four, but I'm going to be able to summon him for only three. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my ability. The next three attachments cost three less. So even though I have zero resources, I can play all of these attachments because they all cost effectively zero now. So I'm going to put this on that guy. And then I'm going to put this on him. And then I'm going to buff up his attack to five. Okay, the only problem I have now is that I don't have any draw, so I'm just going to be top decking for the most part. But let's see what my opponent can can do because I have two allies out here that basically laugh at any weapon he decides to play. The only weapon that would be a pain is uh, Emor's crossbow, and he doesn't have it. So that weapon there has an attack value of three, but when it's in combat with my allies, it'll actually have a attack. It'll, its attack value will be reduced down to one. Let's see. So, hmm, do I want to play one of these guys out? They're just going to die. I'll wait till my next turn and play them both out at the same time. So, what I'll do here is I will attack. Oh, well, actually, they won't. I forgot. So, remember, the first ally you summon costs one less. So, a Wolven Trader costs two. So, I'll be able to summon him for one. You see? Only one resource. And then I can play out this guy. Cool. So that's going to give me, so I played this guy, and because I summon another one, this guy's going to give me draw. Because whenever you summon whenever you summon a woven ally at the end of your turn, when you don't control a woven hero, you get to draw one card. So I played this guy out, and then I played this one. So this play triggers this guy's activation, and then this guy's ability actually gets uh, triggered because this guy was played as well. So I should draw two cards at the end of my turn. So I'm going to come in, deal some damage to this guy. And then I'm going to come in, deal more damage to the hero. Because I just do not care about this, this little ally here at all. It's just not going to affect me. So I should draw two cards here. This guy's ability was activated because this was summoned. And this guy's ability was activated because this one was summoned. So let's end turn. And I should draw two cards. There you go. And see, now it's just too bad that I, I couldn't keep one of those Ellis Resolve because I could have had another ally out here with that minus two damage reduction. So I wonder who he's going to put that on. Oh, that's right. And then as long as you don't control a weapon or armor, this this ally here, Woven Tactician, makes all your opponent's 
abilities and items one extra resource so you see hunter's gambit actually costs three but if you look at his resources he had to use four to summon it that's because this guy's in play so if you have more than one of those in play it stacks so hunter's gambit would be five instead of four so let me see i think what i'm going to do here is i'm going to go ahead skip and i'm going to play out another one of these guys and then I'll come in here, come in here, deal five damage. And then I don't want him to be able to kill this tactician off because if he has another gambit, he could play the gambit to reduce this guy down to two and then finish it off with this ally by dealing only another two damage. So now what he has to do is spend five resources to even play a gambit because it would gambit would be bumped up to four resource cost because of this guy five resource cost because of this guy oh but he has a forgotten horror okay so that comes in deals four damage to to my ally with the highest attack and since both my allies had five attack value it hits the first one on the on the left so remember if you have if you have allies in play or if your opponent has allies in play with the same attack value it's always going to hit the first first ally on the board okay so it's always going to hit the one closest to the hero so if you had five here and five here it's always going to hit this guy so let's go ahead and i'm not gonna ah, what the hell let's use it i'll use my ability to summon blood frenzy to get one of my draws going and then I will play this onto this guy. And I will come in, hit the hero here. Let's say, good game. Okay, he's not there anymore. Okay, so that was actually a pretty quick match. Um, it was actually a really good matchup for me, to be honest. Uh, it, it doesn't get any better than that. If, if you're, if you're going to be playing uh, Wolven style you don't mind at all facing a weapon hero because of Elos Resolve. And so I know it was a short video and I like to play longer videos to show more interaction, but I think we got to see a pretty good amount. Yeah, we got to see the key cards. So let's take a look again at Vess. So Vess for three shadow energy, the next three attachments you summon cost three or less. It costs you three less resources. Okay, so every, re every attachment that's in this deck for the most part costs three or less. So you see, it would make Blood Frenzy cost zero, so you could play it for free. It would make Elos Resolve cost zero. The only attachment it doesn't affect is Confluence of Fate. So this has a cost of four resources. So even if you use your ability, this will still cost you one. So don't forget that. Everything else you have in here is gonna be fine. It'll be reduced down to zero. This is still gonna cost you that one. Okay, so Wolven Trader. Uh, while, while you control a non-woven hero, as I said constantly, which this is uh, this is a warrior hero, uh, you get to draw a card at the end of your turn when you summon another woven ally. So you play this guy out, and then if you summon this as well, summoning this will trigger the ability to draw your card at the end of your turn. So you can imagine if you get two or three of these out, for every one other ally you summon, you're going to get to draw two or three cards at the end of your turn. So that could really ramp up your draw. Uh, this ally is in here. He's just he's a good ally to have. He can attack stealth or he can attack uh, stealth allies. Or if there's a protector on the field on your opponent's side, he can still attack and kill the other allies. It, he negates the protector. Uh, Scout is in here just because it's, it's a nice little card to have because you're able to view your opponent's hand. And so on your turn, their, their hand will actually become fully visible and you can look at each card that they have, which can help you with your strategy, you know, on what you want to play and knowing, you know, what they're likely going to be doing. Uh, Wolven Renegade, Wild Fang. So he's a unique ally, so you can only have one in play at a time. But uh, while you control, again, a non-woven hero, the first woven ally you summon costs one less resource. Okay, so that's why this guy got dropped down to three. And then on that one turn, remember I had two of these in my hand and I thought I wasn't going to be able to summon them. But then I remembered, oh, that's right. I got the ability. So the first one I summon is going to only cost one because it's reduced by one by Wild Fang. So that's why I was able to summon two of these guys for only three resources because the first one only cost one. And then the second one actually cost two. 
And so little things like that, I think I seem to forget when, I look, when I'm having to commentate and try to you know, help with the gameplay at the same time. A uh, woven tactician. So you see while every ally you control is a woven and you control no weapons or armor, opposing abilities and items cost one additional resource. So you have to have all woven allies and you have to have no weapons and no armor in play. If you do that, uh, it's especially effective against mage. Because, you know, mage, maybe they want to use a supernova to, to clear the board. But if you have one of these in play, that makes that supernova cost six. And then if the next turn you play another, it makes the supernova cost seven. So you, you, there's a chance that you could potentially kill your opponent before they even have a chance to use their big spells or items. Because they just can't get around the extra cost value that this guy makes their, you know, abilities or items. Uh, have to deal with uh, the other one is a uh, priest you know priest has that tidal wave real nasty ability for five costs that kills all allies but if you're going first especially and you get to play one of these guys out or two all of a sudden that tidal wave being six and seven cost it's not easy for them to get out and maybe you end up killing them before they get up to the number of resources they need to do so uh, dark riding hood is one of the newer release cards it's a, another, again this is a unique ally and uh, other woven allies have plus one attack when when uh, Riding Hood is in play. When Dark Riding Hood deals damage to an opposing player or to an opposing ally or to yourself, really, it doesn't matter. All she has to do is deal damage and then you get to draw a card from each opposing player's deck. Uh, really, there's only one on one matchups in Shadow Era and maybe in the future there'd be some expansion for two versus two. But right now, if she gets to stick on board, and you deal damage to, with her in any way, you get to draw a card from your opponent's deck. So technically, that's another draw source for you. And so, but she usually does not stick around very long because no player wants to have your opponent stealing your cards. And uh, Crippling Blow for two cost, this shuts down your opponent's allies' attack value down to a maximum of zero. So. Any ally that your opponent puts into play, you can throw this onto them and shut their attack value down completely. And the only way they can get it off is if they have some kind of attachment removal. Elos Resolve, really one of the key cards in this game. And really, it was one of the key cards in that matchup. Unfortunately for my opponent, this was a terrible matchup for him because I happened to draw three of these in my starting hand. And it just ate up his weapons. You saw my allies were only taking one damage from his weapons because the attack value of three was reduced by two and so as, as we saw attack has uh, the ally has plus one attack and plus one health when you attach it to them and all combat damage to that ally is reduced by two so ability damage still goes through it okay fireball is still going to deal four damage uh, magia's ability is still going to do three damage mm, death mage thaddeus will still do two damage so any kind of damage like that it'll still do uh still do its regular damage but any, anything else that tries to swing and hit into it, like a weapon or allies trying to do physical combat damage, it's going to be reduced by two. Relentless Savagery. So Relentless Savagery is an al it focuses on buffing claw-based allies more than anything else. So here we go. See this little claw there? So every ally in the deck except for Riding Hood has claw-based attack. So when you place this onto an ally with claw-based attack, it has an additional plus one attack, and then it's uh, returned to your hand when that ally is killed, okay? But you see the first part of the ability is you can attach it to any, any friendly ally. It does not have to have uh, claw attack, okay? But if you put it onto anything without claw attack, it'll just have plus one attack. And then when that ally dies, the attachment will go to the grave. So you have to, if you want to get the maximum value out of it, you have to put it onto an ally that has claw attack. This way it gets, you know, plus one, plus one, so plus two total attack, and then it's recycled to your hand when that ally dies. That's really how you get the most value out of this, and you don't want to use it really in another way. Unless you have to, or maybe you can close out a game with just that one extra damage. You know, it's up to you. Blood Frenzy, we've seen it in the other, other warrior decks. Any warrior deck you make, likely is going to have four of these in it. You know, you take one damage at the start of each of your turns, you get to draw an extra card. So, Blackened Heart. So, this deck is, uh, this card is in here on word from uh, BT Nocturnal, formerly BT Zoti. And so, what it does is it makes your allies immune to shadow uh, abilities activated by shadow energy. 
So it can be pretty good at times, and other times completely useless. You saw in my matchup with Boduru, I know he's not going to have anything that uses shadow energy to attack my allies. So this, easy to sacrifice early game. I just add no need for it. But against an ally like Zaladar or maybe even Boris, <clears throat> Boris, you know, he has his ability for four shadow energy. He can kill an opposing ally of cost four or less. But if you put this onto that onto an ally, he can't kill it because his ability is, up, you know, utilizes shadow energy. So it can be a key card in some matchups, and it's, it's auto sacrifice in others. Wheel to fight. So this is a, an ability for three costs. So it falls right into uh, Bess's uh, range of, you know, three cost or uh, reducing allies by three cost. And so what you do is you play this on an ally, and that ally has haste. So let's say you play out something like, let's go back here. Let's say you play out Woven Tactician, right? Then you activate your ability. You can put the will to fight on Tactician and gives it, and gives it haste. So this way you can attack with it the turn it's summoned. And then maybe you also have Relentless Savagery in your hand. So you can play that onto Tactician as well. So then that's a haste at six damage. If you have Ellis Resolve, that buffs every, buffs up to seven. So all of a sudden, you're looking at a hasted seven damage ally to your opponent's face, and that's a big swing in damage. That you know maybe you can close out the game, or maybe you get it to get the game closer, so they can't try to finish you with spells like Nova or things like that. Or maybe you just use it to kill a big ally that's you know uh, on your opponent's side of the board. So, it gives you it gives you multiple options usually though you're probably wanting to use it to go to your opponent's face to try to close out the game uh, confluence of fate this was my second draw option in the deck and so you place it onto your hero and then at the end of each of your turns you draw a card for each attachment you summoned that turn but up to a maximum of two i think one of the other decks i used in one of the videos used this as well so if you summon two two attachments at the end of your turn, you'll draw two cards. You only summon one, you'll draw one. If you don't summon any, none. Easy stuff. Okay, so this was Vess. Yeah, this video is a little under 20 minutes. It's good. I, I like to keep them short like that. And so this was just one way to play Vess. There's a number of multiple ways out there. Some people like to use the Yari tribe. Uh, some people just like to use a really heavy control deck, which focuses on uh, eliminating or shutting down your opponent's uh, allies that they put into play and then uh, waiting for your late game win condition but this one i like the most so i decided to play this one and so let me know what you guys thought uh leave a comment you know like share subscribe all that all that good stuff and you know try to help us to get this channel more and more popular so we can get more and more exposure put out there for more people to see and hopefully come join us in this awesome game because we all know what a great game it is and we just want more people to be here to enjoy it with us all right Okay, guys, so thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time.